Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Social Media for Economic Development. My name is Lauren Gilchrist, and I'll be your host today from C2ER, the Council for Community and Economic Research. I'd like to introduce our two presenters to you today, Anatalia Ubalde and Eric Simonza of GIS Planning. Anatalia Ubalde is co-CEO and co-founder of GIS Planning. His work in geographic information systems, economic development, and the internet has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg Business Week, Forbes, and Inc. Magazine. He is a previous recipient of the International Economic Development Council Outstanding New Economic Developer of the Year Award, is a member of the Board of Directors there, and in 2009 was named a fellow member of IEDC for achieving exceptional stature in the field of economic development. Mr. Ubalde has also accepted the Cornet Global Economic Development Leadership and Accomplishment Award for GIS Planning. He has received awards from the Council for Urban Economic Development, American Economic Development Council, American Planning Association, and was featured in the U.S. Department of Commerce's Innovative Local Economic Development Programs publication. He has a master's degree in city planning from UC Berkeley. Eric Simonza is a product manager at GIS Planning. He has worked in economic development in the service of small businesses for over 10 years. He has consulted with business improvement districts and managed multi-million dollar employment service contracts. He currently manages the national site selection website zoomprospector.com as well as sizeup.com, a free business intelligent website that launched in September at TechCrunch Disrupt, where it was one of 30 finalists out of over 1,200 applicants. Eric also has a master's degree in city and regional planning from UC Berkeley. With that, I'd like to welcome our presenters and turn over the presentation to them. Uh, okay, hi. Well, well uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Lauren. And I, first, I just want to thank uh, C2ER for inviting us to present today. Uh, so we've got a lot of information to go through on how social media can be used for economic development. Uh, but first, I want to give you some highlights of a recent survey that we performed around this topic. So uh, just as a way of context, uh, back in the summer of 2007, this is, this is when everything kind of seemed so bright and sunny. Uh, we surveyed uh, economic development organizations to see what marketing strategies they were using, uh, how they were all allocating their budgets among them, and how they perceived their effectiveness. And uh, the results were published next year in the, in the book, Economic Development Marketing, Present and Future. So in 2009, uh, at the depths of the economic slump, uh, we distributed a brief follow-up survey to see specifically how the budgets and attitudes of EDOs had changed in light of the downturn. So now in, in 2011, uh, the economic climate is still a bit murky, but there, there are some bright spots, and EDOs are beginning to ramp up their activities again. So as it had been a full four years after our first comprehensive survey, uh, we felt it was time to, to revisit the state of economic development marketing, and we had a few big questions we wanted to answer. So we wanted to see what, it, what has changed since the downturn, uh, how are communities, EDOs, and site selectors responding, and what, what's the impact that social media is having on, on marketing and communication. So once the results were in, uh, we found that websites continued to be the most effective marketing strategy uh, for, for economic development. 82% of respondents rated that as an effective strategy. Uh, and you can also see a little further down the list, social media uh, ranked at 47% found this effective. This wasn't even a choice in, uh, in, in our last comprehensive survey. So that's, that's certainly significant showing. So now uh, there's a lot happening in this chart. Uh, but what you can see, there's, there are three distinct points uh, for 2007, 2009, and 2011. This shows the change in the perceived effectiveness of marketing strategies over time. And you can see a, a, a very distinct V-shape for most of these strategies. Uh, so what was happening was in 2009, there was a real drop. People were really uh, pessimistic about, uh, about most of these strategies. And this really did coincide with when they were flashing their budgets uh, for, for marketing. So it's kind of a, maybe an indication that they're rationalizing the, the cuts they were making. Uh, but now in, in 2011, uh, we, can, we can see that most of the, the perceived effectiveness has, a, has rebounded for just about every strategy to, uh, to the point that it's actually higher than it, than it was in, in 2007. Uh, for social media, this was something we just started tracking in 2009. Um, but you can see that it had one of the more dramatic increases uh, over the past two years in terms of uh, perceived effectiveness. So yeah, now we're going to look at budgets. Uh, so EDOs gave their highest budget allocation to websites. And uh, while this, this position was not a, a change from the last survey, uh, the actual percentage of the budget given to web websites has risen slightly. Uh, and then further down the list, social media 
Uh, you can see the, the average budget, budget allocation is only 3%. Uh, this, this was ranked 15th. Um, but it received the seventh highest uh, effectiveness rating. So what this kind of shows is that social media uh, does not need much of a capital investment to, to, to be effective. So this next slide here, we, we look at uh, what budget items uh, the EDOs plan to increase in the next five years and what they plan to decrease. And you can see that over 70% of EDOs anticipated that they would increase their spending on, on websites in the next five years. Um, the only other marketing strategy to have the majority of EDOs plan to increase the, their spending was for social media. So here we take a look uh, at specific website features. So we're, we're now looking at websites. And uh, the green is what EDOs say they currently have, and the blue is what they plan to implement within five years. So uh, you can see down, down the list where social we have social media integration. 56% of EDOs have social media integrated into their websites now, and 28% plan to implement this within five years. And that's the, uh, of all planned implementations, that's, that's the third highest of all website features. So now I'm going to shift and give a little bit of background on the evolution of media. Um, so the old way of media, well, things like TV and newspapers, is uh, where there's a message and there's, they're sending it to you. And so it's a form of of communication that's one way because you can't respond back. And now, then in Web 2.0, this is where people start to be posting comments on web pages and blogs, and there really is some two-way communication. Uh, and then after that, we have social media, and this, this really brings these kind of two-way interactions to another level because uh, you're allowing for people to easily contact those people that are specifically in their social networks uh, in ways that weren't possible. So it's kind of like Web 2.0 on steroids. Uh, and then after that, we, we, we're, we're in Asia uh, Web 3.0 is, is otherwise known as the semantic web. Uh, it's not really the focus of this talk, but I'll just touch on it to say that it builds upon the elements of what came before it, but it's more data-driven. Uh, it's where computers are interpreting more information and often acting on it on, on your behalf. So uh, here we have an image that comes from a tool that uh, allows you to graph your social network. So here we see an example of a social graph, and you can see that there, there are different clusters. Uh, it's, it's not even, evenly distributed. Um, you have these clusters may be uh, your friends from work or, or high school or other groups. Uh, and these clusters may be connected, but they don't necessarily have to be. Um, and it's useful to think about these clusters and their power when, when you are using social media. So here we see where people are spending their time on the internet. And you can see that people are spending time on social networks and blogs more than any other activity. Uh, this category is also growing the fastest, uh, with a 43% increase uh, in, in time spent from 2009 to 2010. So now I'm going to shift back. We'll look at some more of our own survey results. Uh, we asked uh, which social media strategies EDOs engage in. And we found that 73% uh, uh, have Facebook pages, 58% have Twitter accounts, 56% have a LinkedIn group, and 50% have uh, video sharing. So uh, these are the strategies used by the majority of EDOs. But it's, it's not enough to create a social media account. Um, to get any real benefit out of social media presence, uh, it's, it's important to engage frequently and make use of the, its real-time nature. Uh, so we, we found that 20% of economic developers use Facebook and Twitter on a daily basis, and 15% uh, 15, 15 use LinkedIn. Uh, so these, these numbers are, are, are somewhat low and, and can certainly stand to increase. Okay, just trying to advance here. Okay, so uh, when asked to rate which communication strategies for economic development were most effective, uh, economic developers gave the highest ratings to LinkedIn, followed by face, Facebook, video sharing, and Twitter. And it's interesting to note that these effectiveness ratings are considerably lower than the percentages of videos that are engaging in the strategies. So there's, there's some skepticism about the effectiveness of these channels uh, among the people that are, that are engaging in them. Uh, so we should keep in mind when looking at these results that we're, we're still at an early adoption stage for, for these strategies. And as EDOs become more comfortable and proficient in these strategies, and as the business community's involvement on these platforms grow, uh, grows, we, we expect EDOs to have more success with social media. Uh, so we also conducted a separate survey of site selectors and asked how they use social media. So I'm just going to give you a few highlights from, from that uh, survey. We, we found that site selectors spend 23 minutes per day engaging with social media for work, uh, which is, was slightly less than uh, for, for economic developers. We found that 61% of site selectors agreed with the statement that social media will grow in importance in their jobs in the coming years. So 
So we, we definitely anticipate this will be more important. Um, and we also found that you know, site selectors utilize LinkedIn and blogs more than EDOs. So uh, kind of hit that EDOs may have a little bit of catch up to do in, in, in that uh, for, the, for those particular strategies. So that's kind of a big picture uh, idea of how EDOs are, are using social media. And now I'm going to turn it over on Anatolio. He's going to give you some, some more detail on, on some more specific strategies. Thanks, Eric. That's great information. I, you know, of the survey, this is one of the things that surprised me the most was, you know, I, you know, I thought that perhaps economic development organizations or maybe site selectors, maybe they were spending 10 minutes, maybe five minutes, on social media, but in fact, it's a pretty significant part of their day, the people who are actually involved. So let's talk in terms of the trends, in terms of what's actually, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the powerful trends in communication and how social media plays into this. So for example, uh, the way that economic developers have traditionally tried to reach businesses and influence them were through two main strategies. One is uh, to reach the most powerful influencers, they're reaching them through traditional public relations. And this is trying to get into things like the Wall Street Journal or, or uh, you know, Business Week or Inc. Magazine, things like this. Of course, the, the challenge with this is that it's very hard to get into these publications and you can't control the message. The other way to control the message for economic development organizations that have huge budgets so they tried to do uh, mass marketing, but there's big challenges with that because we as economic developers, we're competing with, with huge companies that have big budgets, so we were just a little bit of, of noise in a sea of advertising. But the new opportunity for, for us is in, in uh, what I talk about in my book, called, uh, which we call the magic middle. And this is the opportunity where we are influencing the influencers. And the word of mouth impact moves up to, to, uh, to the decision makers. And online and through social media is a terrific way to influence the thought leaders, domain experts, and community fire starters. The other important concept is that we're, we're able to, through online communications, reach businesses at the moment of relevance. This is exactly when they're looking for a solution. So here are three things that you better get used to. The first is that information is real time. Social media has made this uh, even more so because all of the media, is, it's not get happening on its, uh, you know, being published every 24 hours. It's getting published every hour, every minute uh, along the cycle. And the expectation that, that economic developers get back to businesses is in real time. The second issue is there's a loss of control. I would say more old-fashioned economic developers have tried to hold on and say, you know, I'm going to control what people are talking about in terms of my community, or that I will be the one that will shape how my community is marketed. Well, now with social media, everybody has a bullhorn to tell their story. So as economic developers, we have the choice. We can either engage in the conversations that are happening, or they're just going to happen without us. Another major trend is that communication is a team effort. Marketing directors can no longer do all of the marketing. It requires the work from everyone from the CEO to the intern, and everybody's voice is valuable. And it's not just internal. It also includes the marketing team of CEOs and other businesses within the community that are sharing your story. Now I'll talk about and I'll put it in order in terms of uh, what people are using. Let's first talk about Facebook for economic development. Facebook, when you look at the sheer numbers, and the numbers are much bigger than this. Uh, this is the last time that they really uh, talked about the numbers, but um, I've recently heard they're up to three quarters of a billion users of Facebook. They just dwarf the other social networks. And here you can see just how quickly they've grown. And people have said, well, you know, this Facebook is just for kids. Well, no, in fact, even the seniors are doing it. One of the mistakes that a lot of economic development organizations make is they ask people to friend our organization. There's a difference. People have profiles and businesses and economic development organizations have pages. So this is an example of my personal profile on Facebook. 
This is what a Facebook page for an economic development organization looks like. You can see elements of that, um, which I'll show you in a sec. This is how you create a Facebook page. When you, if you're not logged in, you go to the Facebook homepage. At the bottom, it says create a page for celebrity, band, or business. And that's what we fit in under. Uh, I guess you could consider us a, we're the celebrity economic development organization. So you just click on that, it takes a few minutes, and you can create a page. Let me show you some of the elements of a page. So th this is a, an, the organization's logo. There's contact information. There's a number of people who like the organization. And that's the button that, that will increase that number of people click on it. And these are links. They used to be called tabs, but now they're on the left-hand side, and they're links. And this is the wall, similar to your personal uh, profile on Facebook. This is the organization's wall. These are some of the things that you can share to engage your audience. So you can invite people to a networking event. You can actually invite information. So this is a way where they're doing real-time market analysis. They're saying, you know, um, what retail does Oklahoma City need? Let's get some discussion going. Again, this is real time. Or here, they're inviting people to an event sponsored by the organization. And they can add that event directly to their personal calendar within Facebook. It's all integrated so they can just click and it happens. Here in Wyoming, see that they uh, just posted an available job. And here's something really great where this, this uh, company, they actually posted a thank you to the Economic Development Corporation, saying, uh, we really appreciate the recognition that, that they gave, that the Laramie EDC gave them in their newsletter. And here they're showing positive news, such as their tax-friendly climate. You can also post photos. Here's a great one where somebody posted a question on their wall saying, what are business missions? What do you do? And that provides them an opportunity to respond, to educate people about what economic development is and what they're doing in their organization. And here they explained, you know, um, business missions allow them to meet with companies that have an interest in North Carolina or the Charlotte region. And we also meet with major site consultants. You can also post video. Now through links you can add additional information. So these are links that have that they've uploaded to Facebook. You can also add photos and events. So this is a calendar of, of things that uh, people can sign up for. People can also subscribe to uh, RSS feeds for their blog. And here's a great one. It's very simple. It's just saying. Hey, sign up for our emails. This is permission-based marketing so that people can say, yes, I'd like to get more information about the Anchorage EDC. I enter in my information, and now the, the EDO has permission to send them emails without spamming them. This, is, this one I thought was, was pretty interesting. They actually have a music link, and in the state of Michigan, they have a Buy Michigan song. So for those of you who want to hear the, add the Buy Michigan song to your playlist, you can, you can go there to Saginaw Future. You can also add demographics and also properties if, uh, if there's properties available. Here are three ways you can improve your Facebook page. First is to claim your vanity URL. You can see up here at the top that it's facebook.com slash Lincoln EDA. That's a much easier way for people to find, to find your page or for you to tell people how to find your page than having facebook.com slash x432abc. And it's easy to do. You can also use a custom landing tab using uh, Facebook markup language, and now they're actually enabling other ways to do it. So this is Georgia's. Now their, their landing page doesn't look anything like a lot of those pages that I showed you before because they've customized it. So they can, you can watch a video and they have additional content. 
Charlotte uh, asked people to uh, sign up for uh, email. And they also say here, this you know we're awesome, and it's the number one reason to like our page. What they're trying to do is get people to click on that like button so that Charlotte's content will be part of, of their feed. Another option is to add Facebook apps. There are many different Facebook apps that exist. Um, you know, some are, are simple ones like uh, playing games or calendars or things like that. But there are two that have been developed for economic development. And in full disclosure, these are ones that we've developed. However, they're free. So, so it's, it's not something that, that will cost you anything. Um, and I just want to show them because they are designed specifically for economic development. You can add demographics. For any of your cities or counties, we have data. And all you have to do is uh, sign up to, to, to download that app. And you can see in this case, uh, for New Braunfels, they're able to have information about their people, labor force, um, entrepreneurship, budgets, and so on. If we have property information for your organization, we, you can also add property data. Okay, now let's talk about LinkedIn. Now, uh, you probably thought, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. First, let me give you a little bit of background about LinkedIn. Uh, it's worldwide. Executives from all Fortune 500 companies are on LinkedIn. It's a very affluent group of people who are on LinkedIn. And 45% are business decision makers. This is the CEO of LinkedIn. He talks about how everyone is now an entrepreneur, whether they recognize it or not. In fact, for everybody who's on this call, that, that the job that you're in right now is not the last job of your life, you fall into this category. You too are an entrepreneur uh, because you are going to be marketing the company you. And while you might have thought that this, this uh, webinar was just going to be about what to do for your organization, I also want to talk about how you can use LinkedIn for your own professional development. So let's start with you as an entrepreneur. There are two ways that you might find your next job. One, uh, it could be passive or it could be proactive. Through technologies like LinkedIn, people can actually find you. So let's say that you are somebody that has exactly the right resume for the type of, of economic development research job that they're looking for. Now, maybe the person who's hiring doesn't know you, but through LinkedIn, they can see how they're connected to you. And not only that, they can talk to the people who know you to see what they think about you and if you would be a good fit for the job. You can also turn this uh, around so you could be proactive. Let's say you find an organization that you're really interested in working for, and what you do is you see how you are linked to the person who is making the hiring decision. Well, you could talk to your link to make, an, to make an introduction to that person or have them talk to, to their connection on your behalf. This is an example of a LinkedIn profile. This is my profile. At the top, there's basic information, you know, where, where I work, where I went to school, a summary about who, who I am and what I've done. Down below, you can see additional information, such as where I've worked, the skills I have, the books I've written, where I've gone to school. These are recommendations. I'll talk about recommendations a little bit more. But these are people who have had something positive to say about what the experience has been like working with me. And down below, the LinkedIn groups that I'm a part of and honors and awards that I have. Here's why you should add information for connectability. The more you add you know, where you've gone to school or where you've worked or the activities you're involved with, there's more opportunities for connections. And those more connections create an increased prob probability of you being seen. Like I mentioned uh, in the previous section, you can also add a custom URL for your LinkedIn profile. And there, there's a link within your profile so that you can do that. So for example, in mine, instead of it being you know, LinkedIn.com slash in slash 432XYZ, 
it actually says my name. You might say, well, what does that mean? You know, how will that really help me as a professional? Well, if you do a Google search on me, you'll find out that LinkedIn actually shows up one, two, three, it's the fourth link, and it's, it's there showing my name. So that can create value and more visibility for you. Also for your organizations, from your profile, you can add links to your, the websites of your company. There are many apps you can add to your profile also. Here's a reason that I would uh, recommend you get and give recommendations is, is because it helps how people perceive you. And these are some of the people that you can get and give recommendations to. Former managers, colleagues and coworkers, customers and clients, and business partners. This is going to be especially valuable to you or your colleagues at your organization who are doing business in targeted industries because as you talk to more people in those targeted industries, they're going to see that people within their industry, their peers, have a good, uh, have a good feeling toward working with you. So that's you as an entrepreneur. Now let's talk about your organization. This is an example of a company's profile on LinkedIn. And I would encourage all of you, if you do not have one, to add one. It's very easy to do. You actually see right here when you're under the company section, add company, you can add yours if it's not already in there. But this is an example of a good one. It has a logo. It has an overview of what their organization does. You can see who are working there, and there's even demographic information about the organization. Here's another one, similar. It, it has very good information about the economic development organization. Uh, the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber has one of the biggest LinkedIn groups in, you know, of any economic development organization, but the time that I, I searched for them for their company profile, it didn't exist. So that's a lost opportunity. This uh, is what happens when I typed in North Dakota Department of Commerce. They don't have a profile. And so you see it, all it does is bring up the people who work there. There's no profile. And it's not a reflection of whether they're a good or bad organization. In fact, I know the folks there. They're a very good organization. It's just they don't have a profile. Another opportunity for you is to join groups for both business attraction and expansion. Whatever industry targets your organization is going after, there is a LinkedIn group that's a great match for you. So if you're, if you're targeting biotech, there's 1,024 LinkedIn groups that's a great match. And also a lot of economic developers aren't doing this. They're not actually joining these groups. So there's very little competition for you to be the expert in explaining why it is that your, um, your community is a great location for, for businesses to start up, expand, or relocate. Here's another example. For plastics, there's 269 groups within LinkedIn. I'll show you a way of how uh, some economic developers are leveraging the value of LinkedIn. And this is a tool that was developed by uh, a company called Whitaker Associates. And it's, it's, they're using it uh, to, to connect LinkedIn to the economic development organization's target list of, um, of companies that, that they're trying to reach to make an investment in their community. And what you see here is that you know, if they're targeting General Atomic, by clicking on the LinkedIn profile tool, you can actually see who you're connected to or how far away you're connected to them. So perhaps you don't have a direct link to them, but somebody you know knows them. That's a much easier way to make a call into them by saying, you know, um, hi, Joe. Um, I know Sally, and I know you know Sally, and I wanted to talk to you about our community. And this is, uh, you know, once you click through there, you can actually see how you're connected and what the shared connections are. Now let's talk about your community. So you can create your own group. It's very simple to do. And this is a great tool for internal conversations about what's going on 
in your area. This is an example from the Metro Denver Chamber, or I'm sorry, the Metro Den Denver EDC. And you can see the type of information that they're talking about. They're talking about things like the 15 Colorado companies on the Inc. 5000 fastest growing list, or that they're accepting nominations for the 50 for Colorado Leadership Program. All of this information is local and provides an opportunity to engage with your local businesses. And sometimes businesses outside of your area that are considering an investment may also join your groups. Now let's talk about you, the economic developer. So there are ways that you can use LinkedIn to help yourself uh, in the daily work that you do and also to improve your status within the profession. So under groups, you can type in things such as economic development. And these are the three largest economic development groups on LinkedIn. It's the Economic Development Professionals, Economic Development Leadership, and the International Economic Development Council. Uh, the second largest one is one that we control. I can't uh, promise you that you can get into the other two groups, but if you're interested in joining ours, you're welcome to. I also did a search, and you can see that C2ER also has two groups. So these are great ones that, uh, that you can join to engage with your colleagues within C2ER. This is what it looks like before you join a group. So you can see which of the people that you're connected to are already in that group. Once you've joined, you can see the information within. So you can see um, these are questions that economic developers are asking. Has anyone developed a webinar to site selectors as opposed to face-to-face -face meeting? Then 20 people responded to her question. Now, what incentives is your community using for business retention efforts? These are all questions, and your colleagues can solve your, you know, solve um, the answer. They can provide answers to the questions that you have and help you out. These are just some more examples of the types of questions and posts that are happening within these groups. Now, there's a very good reason of why you should, what you personally get from posting and responding is, and for all of you who are on LinkedIn, you probably see this yourself, is the, the posts get sent to you in your inbox. And in those posts, it actually shows who's responding. Well, that's high value to you because thousands of your peers see your name and your knowledge. They see you as an expert, and that has value to you because when they're looking for an expert they want to hire, your name can be top of mind. Which brings us full circle back to you as an entrepreneur. So through these different types of ways of engaging LinkedIn, it helps your organization, your community, and yourself. Now let's talk about Twitter. Now Twitter is one of the types of social media that a lot of people understand the least. Uh, but that's also part of what makes it very successful is this kind of uniqueness about it. So Twitter launched on 2006. There's many people using it. I'm sure you hear people uh, talking about it on TV or you have friends who are talking about it. You're starting to see things like hashtags. So let me show you some of the elements of Twitter. So it's real-time information. Uh, it's considered a micro blog. You can tweet uh, 140 characters or less, and uh, you can have a profile that's less than 160 characters. The at symbol, like email, is when you're talking to someone or about somebody. Whatever their, their, um, their address or their profile is comes after an at. So for example, ours could be at GIS planning. The hashtag it, you use when you're talking about a specific subject. So if you're talking about economic development, you might use hashtag econDAO. Twitter's grown immensely fast, uh, and, and you see it's, it's had hockey stick type of growth. This is a Twitter page, and you can see some of the elements of that page. Um, you know, the, this is the at handle, the name, location, a small description of the organization, how many are following, the, the number of followers, and if they're on any list. This is where you type in your tweet under what's happening. And the number above 
that you see here is the number of characters you have left to type. You can only use 140. Here, if you, if you under search, you actually type in uh, the hashtag economic development, you can see what people are talking about as it relates to economic development. So that's a way of searching on topics. So if you're doing research and you're trying to find out what people are talking about around a particular topic, you can just enter in the hashtag, which is the number sign, and then whatever topic you're interested in. Twitter can also give you suggestions about uh, who you might want to follow. This one is funny, as I was actually putting this presentation together, or these, this set of slides. Um, this is a slide that I had, um, I've probably been using for a year or so. And the, the funny part about it, uh, this is that David Zack is a guy who introduced me uh, for a speech that I gave this week in Ohio. So I guess Twitter realized at some point I was going to get to know this guy. Here are five ways your organizations can use Twitter. First is you can share positive information about your community and its business climate. In this case, we're talking uh, Metro Denver saying um, solar, the solar energy system just opened up a new office in Denver. Uh, another example of, of a loan that was given out in the state of Massachusetts or in Northeast Indiana, how they were ranked eighth in business climate by Site Selection Magazine. You can also take part in conversation. So in this case, um, Nick then said, hey, you know, it was a great event, Massachusetts Economic Development, uh, an excellent speech. We're honored to receive the award. Mass Econ responds, you know, this company had 200% job growth in the past two years. So what they're doing is they're creating social capital within each other by promoting each other. And they're doing it through conversation. You can also take part in conversations. So uh, in this case, we're saying, you know, way to go on winning your IEDC award. And they respond saying, thanks. We also got a, a general website award. You can also start conversations. So let's say that you're trying to do research and say, you know, what skills do your employers need? Would our community college providing that training be helpful? This is a way you can get real-time market research and analysis. You can also generate social capital. This is a, an example of someone who, you know, I've never met, but who retweeted an article about us that was in Inc. Magazine. So obviously if this guy contacts me in the future, I'm more likely to, to respond to him. Here you can promote businesses from within your community. In this case, uh, you know, the retreat at Central Texas Marketplace will host a ribbon cutting. So this is for a new business that's opening. Here's some other examples. Um, check out this article about our newest tenant in the downtown center. And also, don't miss another ribbon cutting tomorrow at Jay's Bistro. With all the social media, please also understand that social media exists within a context that is, you know, it's not always just online. This is an example of a project um, that was promoted by um, DCI. They were hired by Chattanooga and they, to, to do PR for them. And they got this article into the New York Times about the fastest net service in the U.S. coming to Chattanooga. So it existed in a print publication that also had the article online. And because it was online, it could be retweeted. And this is how many people within 24 hours through the Internet, through, um, through Twitter, it had 9.8 million impressions. That's a great way of having a combination of offline and online strategy. Now I'll share with you what not to do on Twitter, or at least what not to do on Twitter if you want to keep your, your jobs. This is a pretty unhappy story of, a, of an economic development organization um, that their tweet made it all the way to the Today Show. In fact, it made it all across the country. And it came because uh, they tweeted out that they were leaving early on a Friday uh, because of summer hours and they were going golfing. Well, what happened was is that uh, it got picked up by a lot of the media and in not a very positive way. It resulted in the, the person who tweeted it out getting fired. 
but uh, at the local level, so many people were talking about this tweet and in some very unpleasant ways. Here you can read. Since this, and so this is a post on the local newspaper from people in the area. So I said, since this was referred to as summer hours, the assumption is LBEDC does not do this the rest of the year. Economic development, it appears, is seasonal. Ouch. You know, a lot of people don't understand what we do in economic development as it is. And so this, this certainly was, was not the kind of thing they wanted to, to see happening. Um, complaints about uh, taxpayer money going to the organization and um, saying, are you, this is another comment, are you kidding? She should have gotten a raise. Well, folks, that's just another example of why this country is collapsing. So the reality is, is when it comes to Twitter, what you should tweet about is the kind of things that you'd be comfortable saying in public on the front page of your newspaper, at a city council meeting. Um, it, you can use a casual style, but be careful about what it is that you post. So this may have left you a little bit confused because we, it's a, a wide overview of a lot of issues related to social media, but we wanted to give you um, a high level idea about both the concepts and actually things you can do. I'll close this out with a concept with, which I, uh, I talked about more in, in my book, which is about this idea of the S-curve. And everybody who's on this call can benefit from writing other people's S-curves. So as networks grow over time, their value grows. And in some cases, that value can grow incredibly fast. And the networks that are growing so quickly now are social networks. They are the networks like LinkedIn and Facebook and, and um, Twitter and Google Plus and YouTube. All of these are growing quickly. By using them, we don't even have to create an infrastructure. We simply have to ride their S-curve to create more value for economic development. So with that, I will um, turn it back to uh, any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you to both Anatalio and Eric. Um, I know I learned a lot through the presentation. Just as a remind, reminder to everyone, um, if you could submit your questions through the questions box and go to webinar, we will try to get to as many as possible during the course of the webinar. And uh, I think we have a couple already lined up, so I'm just gonna jump right into them. Um, the first question that I have is, are business decision makers on Facebook, um, let's, on Facebook, or sh are business decision makers on Facebook, or should Facebook be used more for building a community around economic development? So, when you just look at the sheer numbers, if there's a quarter of a, or three quarters of a billion people on Facebook, I mean, that's bigger than most of the countries in the world. So, there's lots of decision makers on there. My, um, I think that Facebook presents a different type of opportunity for engaging businesses. Um, it, may, it may be a terrific way, especially to engage local businesses, and it is probably not going to be the type of business attraction tool that so many economic developers are, are used to focusing on. I also think it's a great people tool. So a lot of economic development organizations are focused on um, talent attraction. And I think Facebook's a great way to do that. In fact, I've seen some organizations use it specifically as a tool to bring talented people into the community. So um, with all of these strategies, we're early on and they're all evolving. So I, you know, I could tell you now that Facebook you know, may not be as successful for business attraction, but that may change. Maybe it will be in the future. Right now I see it as a great tool to connect with people. Okay, great. I, actually, you know what, I'll even give you, a, I'll give you a quick story about this. I was, um, I was talking with an economic developer who said um, that he would never, ever use Facebook for economic development. He thought it was unethical. He thought that, you know, that should only be for his friends. And what we see is that a lot of companies are using Facebook to engage customers, but he didn't feel that way. And I said, well, okay, well, you know, 
how do you use Facebook? He says, well, I have it, you know, for family and friends and then people that I do business with. I said, oh, well, what type of people? He says, you know, even, uh, you know, people that I work with, like site selectors. I said, well, what do you do with them on Facebook? He says, well, you know, I comment on, you know, if they post pictures or I ask them how they're doing with their family. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm creating, uh, you know, just conversations with them through Facebook. And, I, and he says, and I asked him, has any of these site selectors done business in your community? He says, he says, oh, yeah, they return my calls all the time. And, you know, sometimes we talk about work and sometimes we talk about personal things. I said, have any of them located any companies? in your community. He says, oh yes, they have. So I couldn't have been more confused about this conversation I had with this guy because he says he never uses Facebook for business, but in fact he's using it incredibly effectively for business. So sometimes when people say, you know, they don't use Facebook for business, I think you've, you've got to ask those follow-up questions. Okay, great. Um, here's another question. So for, for economic developers or other organizations that are new to Facebook, what are the best strategies to use to gain likes on Facebook or to gain followers on Twitter? So uh, I would encourage you to use some of your existing channels, you know, the, the people that already have a relationship with you. A good marketing and communication strategy is an integrated one. So there are ways that you can use your existing channels to get people to, to connect with you on Facebook or Twitter. So if you have, uh, let's say you have an, a, an email newsletter, you could announce that you have a, a new Facebook page and, and ask people to like you. You could do the same thing on Twitter. Uh, you can add that type of information of what your Facebook page address is or your, or your Twitter address is. On, uh, on, your, um, on your business cards or through brochures. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of economic development organizations doing that. So that's a way to get things started. Um, but as you start uh, entering good content through both your Facebook page and your, your uh, Twitter account, other people will discover you and then like you or follow you. So it's a combination of, of reaching your existing network and then growing it by providing value, either through uh, comments or, um, or the information you post. Another great way is to actually engage. See what other people are talking about your, your community and then, then post things or respond on their walls. And then if they're interested in what you're saying, they're very likely going to like your organization. Okay, great. So this is kind of on the administrative end of things um, as well, I guess. How much staff time should you anticipate needing to implement an effective social media strategy? Well, uh, a few months ago, I wouldn't have been able to give you any numbers associated with that. My view about social media is like any other program, it has to deliver. And if you're getting no return on your investment, you should be spending no time at all on it. If you're getting high value and high return on investment, you may want to con inc consider increasing the amount of time. So there's, there's, no, there's no perfect answer of saying, well, if you spend 10 minutes, you're going to be doing enough. What we can tell you now based on the survey is the amount of time your colleagues are spending. And so the typical economic development organization is spending 24 minutes a day. 26. I'm sorry, tw I'm sorry, uh, 26 minutes a day. So if you want to benchmark yourself compared to the competition, that's the amount of time they're spending. So you might have You know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how much you have to do. If you're a small shop and your organization has very few people, perhaps that's more than, than you can invest because there's other things you're doing. I would encourage everybody, though, to experiment with social media. Try it and see how much is the right amount of time for you to deliver the results you need. Okay, so speaking of that um, as well, you mentioned return on investment. How might you suggest measuring that? 
So there are um, a variety of different ways that you can measure. Some of the really obvious ones with, um, so for example, with LinkedIn, if you have a group, is you can measure based on the number of people who are joining your group. On Facebook, you could measure based on the number of people who are liking your, your page. But I think an even better measurement is how many people are engaging with the page. Now, are they responding? Are they commenting? Are you able to have discussions? Um, Twitter has some types of measurements such as a clout, where you can see really how much you're influencing people through your, your Twitter account. However, at the end of the day, you've also got to figure out how much these folks are turning into conversions of businesses that are engaging with your organization. They're actually talking to you, which results in a business investment. So whether it be a business that expands into your area, a business that starts up in your area, or the people that you're attracting to the area. So eventually you've got to connect it to what your uh, organizational goals are. Okay. Um, the next question I have is related to blogging. How would you suggest integrating blogging, either existing blogging efforts or new blogging efforts, into a broader social media strategy? One of the things that was really interesting from the survey is how much uh, economic developers generally had a fairly low opinion about blogs, but site selectors consider them to be very valuable. So if you are targeting the you know, site selection, corporate real estate professionals, blogs matter. I, would, uh, I think that you need to think about blogging as a, as a company or an organizational strategy because people want to hear from different people within your organization. And, and that's because there's different voices. People are interested in what your CEO or your president or director or however their, whatever their title is, they're interested in hearing from them about the vision and you know, what's happening with the organization. But they're also interested in you know, the, the marketing, the marketing people, the business development people, um, I would even say the interns. So the people who are part of this organization, a lot of you are researchers, and for researchers, you're able to provide really interesting blog content. As you see new information um, about your community, each one of those things can be a blog post. And that's the type of, of information where you can um, share good news or combat bad news. And it's exactly the types of information oftentimes that other bloggers or the media wants to pick up. So I would say that, that people who are involved in research can really contribute a lot of value to blogs. Okay, so this is a, a specific question regarding to using Twitter. Um, for Twitter, how do you know which hashtags to use? Oh, well, uh, one of the ways that you can figure out what hashtags to use is actually to do some searches with hashtags. And, uh, and then you can see what other people are using. Um, sometimes, so for example, in economic development, people use different hashtags for that, for that concept. Some people use econ dev, some use hashtag economic development. Maybe, um, so I, I'll share with you some if you're focusing on corporate real estate. You sometimes see people use hashtag CRE. But if you're uh, focusing on a specific industry target, I would encourage you within Twitter, there is a, a, a search box and just start entering things that you think people might be using and then sometimes you can see the other ones um, that they're using. When, when people are using multiples, you can sometimes find one through the other. Okay, um, I saw that you guys um, mentioned your Facebook add-in that will do some data-driven stuff. So I was just wondering if anybody's interested in accessing that, how do they go about finding that Facebook add-in? So they can uh, download, again, it's for free. It's, uh, there are two Facebook apps. Um, one is for demographics and the other is for properties. And you can find it at facebook.com slash Zoom Prospector. Okay. 
Well, that is all the questions that I have right now, unless someone wants to sneak in a, a last second question. Um, with that, I think we'll wrap things up today. Um, thank you to Eric and Anatalio for the great presentation with a lot of great information and also for answering all the questions that we had today. And we'll hope to see you all at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much.